Hi Manish, welcome to the Robot Show. It's great to have you here. And uh, could you please introduce yourself for our audience in a few sentences, please? Uh, yeah. Hello. So first of all, thanks for having me here. It's a great pleasure to be here and discuss these uh, journey with you. So yeah. So I am actually uh, an engineering graduate. I completed my B Tech in Computer Science from Pune University, and I have been very passionate about robotics since the start of my college. The majority of my work I have did in robotics as the particular as the major domain, and I have built a few projects on it, which we'll be discussing soon. How did you get into robotics? How how did you come to know about robotics? What was the start like? Uh, well, in when since I joined the college, I actually didn't have a lot of knowledge about robotics and like uh, the conceptual understanding of what things are involved in robotics. But uh, then later, when I got in touch with some of my seniors, they introduced me to this competition, ABU Robocon. Uh, so. like since then i started exploring more about it i got into the community i explored more with the friends and the seniors and they taught me a great deal about robotics so since then i was like very enthusiastic towards it and i feel like that was my spark and so i continued following my passion in robotics and that's where it led me okay so that means that you had a few influential characters in your life yeah actually who ex- made you explore this field So what was your journey before your bachelor's like what did you study and how was it Uh well before my bachelor's I like uh, actually did my uh, when I did pursue I wanted to actually pursue electronics engineering at first but uh, then again after I had like a really good score in my CET exams which are like for the entrance in the college exam I felt like uh, going towards computer science would be a good choice because it just like uh, grants you a lot of options later in your career if you want to make a switch so that's why i started pursuing computer science so that was pretty much it before that i didn't actually uh, have any explicit as a knowledge about robotics the major part that i started was only after i started in college so that it's like i started late in my journey about robotics okay well it's it's never too late but uh... So you studied uh, computer science engineering, and you yeah. deviated from it to go into robotics. So how did you make that switch? Mm-hmm. How did you learn the concepts that are involved? Uh, well, the thing is, I feel like I want to make like a statement here for everyone. I feel like whenever you want to learn something, the best way to learn is getting into a project. I feel like it is very difficult. to actually start learning like let's suppose if i want to like build a robot it will be very difficult for me to actually sit and okay go through some courses read some books ki okay this is what the electronics i am going to need this is what i'm going to require uh, for making the hardware work everything instead if you actually start with a project what it gives you is like you have a dynamic understanding like while you are making the project you are understanding the concepts so i feel like that approach helps you learn very quickly so with that approach only like since i was working on a actual project that helped me understand the concept of electronics and mechanics really quickly and of course i had a good team with me who actually like uh, and since i was like very enthusiastic about robotics i actually used to approach them quite a lot like teach me about this like what is this so that approach helped me learn things faster okay that that's great because even i i share this with people learn learning by doing that's a good approach and then asking for help asking for just some guidance or direction i think that's exactly. the biggest step towards learning anything so that's good exactly. to know good to know that and uh, i assume that we are to- going to talk about uh, the competitions that you were a part of so what yes. is that and can you just talk about the competition a bit more about what it is uh yeah i'll just give a short overview about what the competition is so abu robocon is like an international competition conducted by abu that is asia pacific broadcast union so each year they come up with a new problem statement and each year there is a new host country which is a part of the abu so each year we have a different problem statements and students all across the globe they have to adapt to the problem statement they have to innovate on the problem statement and then they have to propose their solutions so this competition is basically divided into two parts that is domestic uh, uh, like level and then the international level so in the domestic level uh, like within a country 
all the teams from all over across the india like let's suppose we are talking about india all teams across india will compete and then there's an uh, final round so out of them one team gets selected to represent india into the international level same happens with all the countries only the host country gets the privilege to have two participating teams so that is the format of the competition and the best thing about this is like each year the new problem statements bring out some new challenges so you have to keep innovating you have to keep learning new thing it's not like you have built one bot you have to just upgrade on top of it so that is i feel like the best part about ab europe open competition okay that that's amazing that sounds interesting so i think you have a few pdfs to share and walk us through a bit more about what what sort of robot you need to build what are the challenges involved yeah sure so i'll share one of the experiences of mine like uh, in the year 2023 abu robocon uh, i'll just share my screen first yeah okay is my screen visible yes it is okay so yeah uh, as you can see this is like the problem statement released by abu robocon so this uh, the in year 2023 cambodia was the host country and the theme was casting flowers over anchor wat so in this theme we had like uh, we had to build two robots basically elephant and rabbit and this theme i would like to emphasize like this theme was actually based on the tradition of cambodia one more thing i like i would like to like uh, bring up here like uh, when india was the host country i guess before this year i guess in 2021 uh, the theme was lagori and it was like a very fun competition because like you each year when there is a new host country you get to experience more about their culture you get to know about what things are going on over there so that is like a really good point about this competition so i'll just give like a short overview like uh, we had two robots and uh, both of those robots had to toss rings that resembled flowers uh, into these anchor wat so these are the poles uh, these are all different size poles and we had to like toss rings into these poles and each ring uh, each pole had a certain like uh, points like these poles had 10 points these had 30 these had 70 so that's that is how the competition went so yeah and uh, yeah one more thing i wanted to add like uh, in the domestic in the domestic competition level uh, there are three levels that are taken like in india so the first level is is the documentation level uh, second is the proof of concept and the third one is actually the offline competition that is carried out so in the documentation phase you had you have to submit basically like a paper about what mechanisms you are going to add in your robot uh, you have to submit a cad model of your robot so as you can see these this is the cad model that we had for our robot and yeah so this one is the elephant robot that we had and i'll show you the rabbit robot so yeah these are the images of rabbit robot so you have to basically like divide your task like let's suppose you have to throw rings so you have to basically make an actuation mechanism you have to make a drive mechanism you have to integrate all of them you have to basically pick rings from the floor so these are the mechanisms and you have to give an explanation for them that how they are going to work so that is like the main innovative part that you have to come up for every time okay So, what is the difference between the elephant robot and the rabbit robot? Is that a name that you've given, or what is it? Uh, no, actually, it was given uh, by the organizers. So, elephant robot basically is like a robot bigger in size. So, uh, if you would have seen, like in the documentation that we submitted, in the rule book that they have given, they have given constraints for each robot. So, elephant robot has a certain specific set of task. Rabbit robot has a certain specific set of task, and both of them have to coordinate with each other to perform those set of tasks. So, like it's like a team game. Both robots have to like work together. both robots in, in this competition there was a choice like we could have both robots manual automatic or semi automatic it was up to us and they gave like the dimension uh, limit the weight limit and the battery limit all those things that are like valid for the competition so that is how elephant and rabbit were different okay got it and uh, what was your robot uh, was it automatic or manual uh well we went for a manual robot because we thought that the game was very dynamic and we had to adapt uh since like if a certain like if your opponent is scoring more on the higher poles you have to go there to challenge them accordingly okay. so that adaptation we thought that it is better to have it 
in an manual mode uh, but actually uh, one more thing i wanted to add here like uh, last year in 2023 Uh, sorry in 24 in this year sorry actually uh, the competition made it very specific that one of the robot had to be automatic okay. so that was one again one challenge for it and it had to do a small task actually of sorting balls different colored balls so yeah that was one of the things okay and how are you controlling it then what was the control like uh, well we used uh, arduino uh, like the base the i would like to make like uh, i like to tell you that this uh, competition that we did the on tw- in 2023 it was like the first time our college participating after the covid time okay. so it was like we had to build everything from scratch we had like not a uh, quite proper guidance and flow so we started experimenting and we went on with ard you know it was like quite a basic and we used bluetooth module and we used a ps4 to control like we used the ps4 library uh, bluetooth library to control our bot Okay, and what about the actuation mechanism? What did you do to achieve that, and how did you achieve accuracy? Uh, yeah, uh, I like to show a video about it. Yeah. I have one video about the mechanism that we are talking about. So basically, for both the robots, we had like some mechanisms that were going to like uh, give them the ability to shoot and everything. So this is a video I will share. uh yeah you can see this this is the elephant robot this is the prototype that we built and yeah okay these were the rings that were placed so you had to go to that location and pick up those rings and then uh, start shooting so okay. this is just one of the videos and yeah one more thing i'll share uh yep this so basically in our elephant robot we used pneumatics uh we like tried different mechanisms at first like during the prototyping phase we mm-hmm. tried uh, like using two wheels uh, as the push for uh, ro- uh, to actuate like to stimulate the mechanism of throwing the ring but uh, what we found out that since this ring is like a different object if it was a ball that would have been possible but since this ring is flexible we tried uh, building that mechanism but we felt that it was like uh, not very reliable so that's why we shifted to pneumatics and this okay. is how the mechanism actually worked uh, you can see this is okay. the pole and we are shooting rings into the pole so yeah that how was how did you the... achieve this accuracy uh, uh, that looked very accurate uh yeah actually for that uh, what we did is first of all we uh, calculated the projectile range like those poles the distance to the poles was fixed so what we did is basically we pointed uh, marks uh, like we uh, marked the areas from where we knew the uh, pressure was enough to shoot uh, into the poles and what we did is like we took multiple tries we recorded all the data and we made an entire excel file about it like what pressure what distance and are we able to hit the target so all after all these trial and error we actually found a particular like uh, pressure distance and uh, range for which we could actually shoot it very accurately okay. so that is what helped us got it so it was like more of a hard coded solution then how do you yeah. control the position of the robot and know the exact distance between the ring uh, between the pole and where you are how do you do that uh yeah so for that actually we used a lidar uh, like a laser actually so basically we uh, we used to drive the robot and we had two options either we could reference it with respect to the pole or we could reference it with respect to the end of the area so with that respect we used to align our bot and then from practicing more and more we are, we are actually able to get those shots in. okay okay and the screen was actually displayed on the robot like this was just the prototype that we recorded in the actual bot we had a small screen behind the robot so that the whoever is operating the robot can see from behind the robot like what the distances and accurately shoot okay that's great i would also like you to just share the image of the robot and then maybe walk us through the components that are used and how it's designed what is the logic behind designing that uh okay I'll just show my screen once again. 
is my screen visible yes okay so Okay, so in this video, you can somewhat see the mechanism. I actually have the CAD model, but it's not loaded right now, so it will take time. No problem. So I'll show this model instead. So this is the pneumatic that we have used. This is the shooting arm that we have made. And this mechanism right here, it is basically a pulley mechanism that we used to lift the rings from the ground. This is like a simple base plate. And these are the bottles that we used to store the air pressure that was uh, used to power the pneumatic. And this is basically our circuitry. I know it's like a bit messy, but yeah, this is what we like started with and then worked our way up. And we have used four wheel omni drive. The reason behind that was uh, four wheel omni drive gave us the power to like navigate wherever we wanted. We could have used went for a more better approach, like we could have went for a three wheel omni. But the thing is, what this mechanism helped us with, like we found it more reliable instead of using a three wheel home, uh, omni drive or using a mechanism wheel drive. So we went with this four wheel omni drive in a plus shape. This is not a conventional like octagonal shape. This is like a simple four wheel cross. Yes. Okay. Okay. That that sounds good. What is the weight of this bot? Uh, well, uh, during the final uh, competition that was conducted in uh, IIT Delhi, uh, this weight of this bot was around 15 kgs and okay. the other rabbit bot that was again around like, since it was more compact, it weighed somewhere about, about around 12 kgs, I guess. Okay. And the entire competition's weight limit is like both, com both robots combined should weigh below 50 kgs. That is the okay. weight limit. And what materials have we used here? For the frame uh well this this frame is basically made out of aluminium rods so this prototype we actually build it totally from scrap uh that we had from our previous competition like uh previous competitions and uh, i like to mention that entire thing like these this entire prototype was fully built by me and my team the brace including the part like from brazing to actually like uh making all the hardware uh, and making the slots, making the plate, everything, all of this team, all of this thing was done by the team. That's great. That's amazing. Commendable. Yeah. What about the calculations involved in the, you know, ca the length of the arm or the pressure involved? How did you calculate all of that? Uh, well, for that, actually, uh, in our team, we had like divisions for each task. So since I was the team lead, I like divided the task into like four major parts. Like for both the robots, there were separate teams. Uh, and each team had first, uh, first part of the development of the robot was to decide on what things we are going to use, how we are going to use them, and what exact dimensions we are going to use. So in that phase only, we like researched, we prototyped, and we found out that this particular length is enough. So like we, uh, actually I remember like we uh, used a reference uh, of one of the robots that uh, uses this mechanism. Uh, it, was it was used in one of the previous competitions uh, where China was the host and we had to throw arrows into pots. Okay. So in that problem statement, most of the teams went with the pneumatic approach. So we had like their material at our hand like to help with, uh, aid with our calculation and everything. Okay. Okay. That that's good. That's good. How about the ring picking mechanism? How does that work? Do you have a video or a picture of it? Uh, I actually have a video. Yeah. Again, this one we took it during the prototyping. This was the first time we made the bot. Okay. And and where are you testing this? What is this exactly? Uh. Well. Uh. Yeah. Since I was like telling you, the first second round is the proof of concept round. Right. So in the proof of concept, you have to build the arena that is going to be there for the competition in your college. And on that arena, basically you use that arena to practice and to like test all your components and everything. Mm -hmm. And we have to actually record the proof of working video okay. and then we have to submit it. So okay. based on the round one and round two, uh, there is like a judgment and we get like scores based on that. 
so i remember like during this year in 2023 uh, in round 1 that is the documentation round we scored 98 out of 100 and in the round 2 that was the video round we scored i guess somewhere about 95 out of 100 so okay. basically they take these rounds to like filter out teams who are actually good at doing the thing so basically mm-hmm. it would be like a uh, uh, it's like filtering process for the final round which is going to be there at iit that's it okay okay so yeah this is the ring picking mechanism i'll just show you one yeah. video so you can see this ps4 controller i'm like controlling the robot with this yes and yeah this was like the first prototype that we built for picking up the rings okay and yeah and how does uh, it get, get uh, I, how does a ring get loaded to the arm because you have the uh, rings on the plate exactly so for that actually we had this motor mounted over here so what we did is uh, this uh, motor was attached with an arm so basically it used to when the rings were like lifted up to the top uh, the and this mechanism used to come up over here grab one ring and drag it on to this part like you can sh- see it in the shooting mechanism i suppose uh so basically it used to just like grab a particular ring and place it on the throwing mechanism so f- this was the throwing mechanism and from that this pneumatic used to actuate and it used to throw the rings into the poles okay yeah who thought of this mechanism how did you come up this idea uh well actually we just tried and tested and we used the materials that we had at hand to basically prototype everything and uh, come up with ideas like we had some more ideas which we saw uh, other teams implement over there mm-hmm. i'll just share one more photo of a robot yeah this this was one of the robots that we saw during the competition okay uh, so basically they have used this gripping mechanism so it's like uh they have attached like a circular uh, gripper on both the sides of the plate and what they did like when they reached the ring stack they used to grab on it and then they used to flip it entirely onto their shooting mechanism and okay. this was their shooting mechanism they basically made a wheel actuated shooting mechanism here as you can see mm-hmm. so these were like the different approaches that we saw when we actually went to the competition mm-hmm. so i feel like each year when you go to the actual uh, offline competition there you see a lot of different approaches to a single problem and that is i feel like a beautiful thing to this competition absolutely i agree with that can you tell us a bit more about the omni wheel and how it's actuated uh well okay so omni wheel is like a wheel which has four degrees where it can move so basically when it moves clockwise it can go forward it can move backward and it has rollers on the wheel all over it so whenever uh, you move it sideways that is perpendicular to its axis of rotation it basically slides along and moves that way as well okay. so it basically allows you to get uh, like mul- you can move navigate your bot to all directions so that is feasible because of omni wheels there are multiple options available like mechanum wheels in which rollers are there that are attached at 45 degrees but then again we like tried and we felt more comfortable with the omni wheel approach so we went on with it okay so how do you uh, actuate the robot in a linear direction then i understand the forward and backwards but what about right and yeah. left how do you do that uh, okay so since our robot was like in this a plus shape drive so whenever like let's suppose you want to go forward you will only actuate motors on these two terminals okay. and the other two motors will just slide along in the forward direction okay. whereas if you want to go left or right you will only actuate motors on these two parts so basically that will allow your robot to move that way and then again if you had to like align your bot to basically move or to point at a particular pole for your particular uh, for your shooting activity you could actually move the bot clockwise or anti clockwise rotating all the wheels in one particular direction to align it with the pole and then make your shoot okay that's very interesting so how do you how do you code this then are there uh, libraries that you use or what is the process involved in actual programming uh well uh, since we like used ps4 library i don't think there is like any other libraries that we particularly used uh for the code part we basically created functions uh for each part like let's say we created a forward backward and shoot function for the shoot function we used a solenoid that we that we used to trigger 
the shooting mechanism that is the piston and uh, like it is set to high or low so all those functions we made and then we assigned those functions to the ps4 buttons okay so the ps4 joy ps4 buttons used to control the forward and backward thing uh, the x and o those buttons they used to control the shooting the other two buttons they were used to bring up and down the ring picking mechanism so in that way we like uh use the ps4 and the code to like i actually work with the that's that's super interesting thanks for sharing that yeah and uh, what about how many people are involved in this project uh well actually we had a big team like uh, some of the teams in india they have members up to like 30 members 20 members team our team was uh, comparatively smaller we had around like 12 to 13 team members okay. which is still a lot but yeah, yeah it, uh, like you actually need a few team members to be there to support you because it's like a year long competition okay. so uh, throughout the year you have to do a lot of things you have to build the arena like all these things are not actually the part of board building or the robot but still you have to do it you have to manage your finances all the mm-hmm. things are covered in it so you basically need to have that team support with you absolutely i agree and 12 or 13 is also very less i remember back in our university we had a mars rover team and it had almost more than 50 people i think okay. close to 100 but i want to be safe yeah, and yeah, say yeah. 50 but yeah i've seen teams of those sizes and i think 12 or 13 is is very efficient w- what was your selection process like how did you select people uh well the selection process was simple we basically went on like having two or three rounds firstly uh what we did is uh, we actually uh, first conducted session in our college basically uh, making like a general awareness in the college about what this competition is mm-hmm. and ha- like you have to tell uh, to the students about you have to make them aware ki this is these are the things happening into the college so that they can actually take interest and part in it and like develop themselves as well so that was the first part about creating awareness secondly we actually gave them a training period so in that training period me and my team who were like uh, during the four years of college like when we were in third year so we recruited from second year and first year uh, fourth year people mainly do not take part into this because of the placement activities and stuff mm-hmm. so since we were the seniors we had the job of training the new recruits so after giving them the training and working with them we then take uh, take an interview that is the final selection procedure okay. and based on that and what they have worked with us uh, we will see like them okay that's very helpful for people who want to do this but don't know how to start also how many and what kind of mentors did you have on this project and what was their contribution uh yeah so first of all mentors we had from our college and out of the college as well like uh, from our college we had help from our teachers our professors who are basically like guiding us throughout the project checking us checking uh, with us on the progress plus since this was a college funded project uh, we also had help from the college office department and everything so our entire college was involved with us uh, and moreover after like apart from that we had help from our seniors who are in fourth year we used to approach them with our problems and one day they used to come sit with us discuss the discuss the problem bring up the solution and then that was it so whenever we used to face problems we had our seniors we had our uh, mentors uh, from outside the college as well basically the connections that we make during these competitions so they also helped us with this and one more thing uh, for this competition in particular there are many workshops that are conducted uh, uh, all over india as well so you can actually go to one of those workshops as well where they teach what robocon is and some basic stuff about it okay. so that is also one of the options that sounds very positive and i'm glad to hear yeah. all of this what was the total budget how did you manage the finances did you have to pay from your own pocket did your college support it 100% how was it like uh well i'll say most of it was supported from the college the entire budget uh, was around uh, 
two to i would say somewhere close to 4 lakhs that is mainly because uh, we have we included all the travel expenses as well like for the round 3 we had to travel from pune uh, to delhi and back and the living expenses all of those included so it was somewhere close to 4 lakhs i will say and most of it was done from the college side we didn't have to specifically pay anything from our pocket and i feel like most of the colleges have that Uh, thing in india like for this competition as in particular because it is quite a reputed competition so whenever you bring like a high air you are bringing reputation to your college so the college was very supportive in those terms good to know that good to know that and what kind of time commitment did you have to do for this project and uh, did it affect your studies how did you balance both of them uh, well yes and no in both ways since like this was a year long project we had to be there throughout the entire year we had like we had to work after our college hours uh, for the competition so like our college used to end at like 4 pm and from there on we used to like stay in the college till 7 8 pm and work on the robots and on weekends we used to do night outs in college just for this particular project so our college was supportive in those terms as well like we used to stay like during the times of submission i remember we used to stay in the college late at night because it uh, it was like uh, specifically during the round 2 since we were like recording the video we had to like have a complete uh, silence surrounding and during the day it was like many students coming around huddling uh, around the area so it was difficult to record during the day so yeah we had to give a lot of time i'll say like 5 6 hours minimum daily that that's amazing and yeah. i'm glad to know that all of those students also contributed equally i did not hear yeah. anyone you know not working or misbehaving uh, that is the first part like during the team selection like since i was the team lead i had to make sure like i want to select the team which who with whom we can like actually bond and who share the same like uh, emotion with me like we have to do this so we have to do this so like that emotion was like spread throughout the team and that dedication was like pro- shown throughout the year so that i am like very lucky in that, those terms that i have a, had a really good team that's that's great i'm glad you had a good team what was your motivation then i'm sure you were the one who motivated your team but what was what was your in- internal motivation uh well internal motivation was like i like the year before like since there was covid i actually was the part of the team in that year as well but since the covid went on for long uh, our college couldn't like participate in that year and i felt like i had to like uh, put my college back on track okay. so we started from zero and that was my motivation that we have to do this because this is like one of the projects and plus there are many perks of doing it like not just the motivation but you have certain perks for it like once you complete the competition you get a certification from iit delhi and abu robocon that you have completed this competition and basically it boosts your resume a lot i feel mm-hmm. like like you have actually worked on a project that is in real life working so it like boosts uh, like that was the major like uh, motivation behind working at more than i think boosting your resume i think it teaches you a lot especially True. soft skills time management leadership how to work in a team that is multidisciplinary exactly how to just manage everything it's it's amazing yeah. and uh, what 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 is next for you what are you going to do next well currently uh, i'm done with bachelors i'm preparing for masters i'm going to go for masters in robotics so i'm going for gate examination that is graduate aptitude test exam entrance test so in this like i am basically targeting one of the top iits in india to pursue my career further in robotics and with uh, like while doing preparing for that examination i'm also working on my other robotic skills like i've started exploring more about ros2 and building some own personal projects for my like own uh, knowledge uh, gaining gaining more knowledge about the robotics field because i still feel like there's always more to learn yeah. and like whenever i'm like exploring more f- like fields like uh, currently i'm like uh, delved into all the fields that are related to robotics like i have done 3d cad modeling i am like practicing pcb mod pcb designing uh, and i have worked with iot devices as well i have worked with ai ml and uh, visual uh, open cvs and now currently i am also exploring more about ros and everything so i want to like 
develop myself in all the domains to have like uh, a knowledge about everything when i actually go for masters that's a very good approach having some clarity and a direction yeah. is essential what do you do to learn all of these things you don't have a background that taught you this so how do you learn it on your own uh, well actually uh, there are a few courses available online and uh, i feel like the major part uh, from where i learn is basically connecting with people like uh, or let, let it be on linkedin let it be attending the events that are happening around you related to robotics i'm very i try to be very active in the community to interact with people whenever i see somebody build a project and post it on linkedin i'll dm them asking them about the details of the project like how they have built it and how can i come uh, like build something just like that so this is how i basically learn and apart from that i'm uh, like following some youtube tutorials like and then again following the same approach learning via a project so that is what i follow to learn okay that's that's good advice and i'm glad we talked i enjoyed talking to you and learning more about your approaches your projects your entire sure experience and with that i think we've come to an end is there anything you would like to you know talk you know tell somebody who uh, is in the yeah, first one year more. uh yeah one more thing i have actually wanted to add like uh, during this entire project that was a year long there are definitely some moments where you feel like uh, giving up you feel like uh, okay this is the end like i feel that during my personal projects as well so i have a few things to share about it first of all the one big lesson that i learned from the competition itself is that you have to set up strict uh, deadlines strict time deadlines because the stress that comes to you is mainly because you are not following your time deadlines if you are able to follow those then you will not have stress for the most of the part but then again it's like sometimes things are out of hand so whenever there is something like this i feel like the best part is discussing this with your peers your parents or dis- discussing this with your team if you have one and then from that you will basically come to a solution and then you can like move forward so that that i feel like is a very important skill to have the resilience that you want to do this project is very important skill to have apart from the knowledge that you definitely need to have in robotics thank you for sharing that that was very enlightening and i'm sure it will help people who are watching this so yeah sure. i would like to thank you for your time and thanks for sharing sure, sure. all these experiences and we learned yeah. a lot and uh, wish you the best in your future endeavors thank, thank you very much thanks a lot thank you